Hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Welcome back to Setup Wars episode 367. We got a ton of banger setups. So with that said, sit back and relax and let the Setup Wars begin. The holidays are upon us, ladies and gents, which means we're gonna see a lot of console peasants making the transition over to the PC Master Race. So if you guys are planning on building a PC during the holidays, then you're gonna need a Windows CD key to activate your operating system. However, instead of paying full price for a key, you can get one for super cheap at VIP or CDKey.com. They sell a variety of keys from Microsoft Office to Windows 10 and even Windows 11 Pro. Just make sure to use my code TS20 to unlock that extra discount. Now after checking out, you have to go into the user center section on the top right, navigate to your orders and click on view key so that you can copy and paste that into the activation settings of Windows and then you're good to go. So if you, your neighbor or your family member needs a key for cheap, visit VIP or CDKey.com or click my link below. We start today's episode with a setup from Morocco. It belongs to Amine, Amin. an AI engineer who built it over two years for both work and gaming, and shares with his space with two adorable furballs. We don't know their names, but I'll call them Mama Cat and Kid Cat. Get it? Kid Cat? Like, Kid Cat? I thought it was funny. Anyway, this setup is located in a relatively narrow room, and from this angle, it actually reminds me of Mark's setup from episode 361, except with different decor and more vibrant lighting throughout the room. I might be wrong, but it looks like this room doubles as both his bedroom and office, given the clothing and the shoe rack in the far corner, and the couch which probably serves as a bed. In other words, there's a little bit of everything here. A lot of decor and collectibles, an entertainment setup for relaxing with movies or console gaming, and of course the main battle station. Amine is rocking a dual laptop setup with three displays. The main monitor is a Samsung Odyssey G5 Ultrawide mounted to the desk and connected to a Zephyrus Duo 16 laptop with an additional Microsoft Surface laptop below the Ultrawide. For peripherals, he went with a Razer keyboard and mouse combo. As for audio, we have a pair of budget RGB speakers, a Zeal Sound mic, and two pairs of headphones, an HP Omen headset on the desk, and the Arctis 7s hanging neatly on the pegboard alongside the controllers and the miscellaneous gear. The kill management looks pretty solid, although it's a bit messy for my taste. He used Velcro straps to attach cables and the power strip neatly to the center rail of the desk, keeping them hidden from the front view. I do recommend upgrading to a heavy duty power strip with surge protection given the number of devices you have, just to be safe. As I mentioned, the setup is powered by the ASUS ROG Zephyrus Duo 16 laptop with a Ryzen 9 6900HX and an RTX 3080 Ti. This thing has the specs that can rival many custom desktop builds out there. I've personally been using the Zephyrus laptop for ages before I sold it off and got my ROG Strix SCAR18, so I can confidently recommend it, provided you're comfortable with the premium price tag, of course. A great setup and room overall, Amine, thank you for coming on the show. Damn, damn, and damn, boys and girls. This right here is what I call min-maxing. The lighting, the colors, the photo quality, the theme, the TS logo. I mean, everything looks complete and vibrant, yet it's kept to only the essentials. If you're already part of my Discord server, you may have seen this setup back in June during the Setup of the Month Wood Edition contest, where he took the crown for the best wood in town. This setup belongs to none other than Lainad, or Daniel Reversed a heavy duty mechanic from Canada. He's been an active member and supporter on our Discord server and I've closely followed his journey ever since he joined the community. It's been a fun seven months starting last December and my man is now here, guns blazing, right after winning the set of the month title. He's rocking a quad monitor setup which is a bit overkill for his needs but if you ask me, there's no such thing as overkill. If you can afford it and you want to express your interest by building something this incredible, then go for it. The primary monitor is a 32 inch 170 hz ASUS Tough display along with two 27 inch MSI gaming monitors in vertical mode and a portable 15 inch ViewSonic display at the bottom. The layout is quite similar to my own setup, especially with the gap between the main three monitors. This lets him position his Edifier QR65 speakers on stands between them and have easy access to his blue snowball microphone. 
very smart and aesthetically pleasing arrangement. On the desk, we've got the main essentials, a Red Dragon keyboard, a G502 wireless mouse, his stream deck, and a couple of fake plants from Ikea for decor. For some reason, I didn't even have to check to know that the cable management is spotless. You can tell a lot about the cable management just from looking at the presentation of the setup. Everything is super tidy with Velcro straps and cable ties behind the monitors. And the wires underneath the desk are beautifully managed, kept hidden, or attached to the underside of the table. All cables leading to the PC are routed through a black cable channel, which is barely even noticeable from the front. But even if they were visible, it wouldn't look out of place. That's because all the colors match the whole vibe perfectly and it's perfectly centered aligning with the wall. This brings us to our centerpiece, the thing I can't tear my eyes away from. This custom PC is a masterpiece of ingenuity that Dan built entirely from scratch. I closely follow this build journey on our Discord server and after consulting with our community and plenty of trial and error, the final result did not disappoint. It is an absolute beast of a water-cooled system, featuring a Ryzen 7 9800X 3D paired with an ASUS TUF RTX 5090. Believe it or not, this was Dan's very first custom PC build, inspired by Michael's wall-mounted design from Setup Wars Episode 340. The stacked wooden panels are a brilliant way to hide all the cables behind them, leaving only the main components visible. It's a genius idea, and executed flawlessly if you ask me. You know, people often see these types of setups and don't fully appreciate the sheer amount of time, effort, and dedication involved. Dan has been a gamer for years, and while he's had previous setups, it wasn't until recently that he decided to fully maximize his hobby and create something that would impress everyone. It's a meticulous process. First understanding exactly what you want, then experimenting to see what works, balancing colors, materials, space, budget, and personality to create something truly unique and memorable. What can I say, man? This one is definitely for the books. You are now officially one of the very few people who hold a setup of the month title as well as a... Ah. <laughs> the 76th seal of approval as well. If you're watching this, hit me up on Discord to claim your one-of-a-kind plaque as well as a free text source mouse pad. Phenomenal work on your setup, my guy. Vegeta is arguably one of the most iconic characters in all of fiction. Many motivational gym clips draw inspiration from his character, resilience, and legendary quotes, not to mention the countless Dragon Ball and Linkin Park edits on YouTube from the late 2000s. It's no wonder that Vegeta became the centerpiece of Diego's moody, monochromatic setup. The choice of this particular room wasn't accidental. Diego specifically chose a space with angled walls then custom cut the ends of a 12-foot butcher block to match those angles, creating the illusion that the setup extends through the wall. Very clever. The butcher block was wrapped in carbon fiber vinyl to match the overall aesthetic. He intentionally avoided painting it, leaving the option open to switch to a wooden theme later on. Now the setup is split into two parts, the main battle station on the left and a dedicated workspace on the right. For his main display, Diego chose a single 49-inch gigabyte monitor and a 15-inch portable Innocent monitor for his workstation. The desk itself is super clean, sporting a sleek, dark color scheme. For peripherals, he went with the Skyloom keyboard and an MX Master 3S mouse. The rest of his gear, including an iPad, a BenQ dock, Fifine Stream controller, and an extra numpad and wireless chargers for his phone, AirPods and Apple Watch are all neatly placed underneath the monitor riser. The main source of audio are a pair of Edifier QR65 speakers sandwiching the monitor, while the mic of choice is a Shure SM7DB. He also has a pair of ATH and 50X headphones hanging on the left-hand side. Given how tidy the desk surface is, it's no surprise that the underside is equally immaculate. 
all cables are bundled and attached to the back of the desk, tucked into a cable net. No complaints here. Under the desk is also where we find what's driving all those pixels. A 14-inch MacBook Pro placed in a custom compartment that he built from spare metal parts. He is planning to build a gaming PC soon though, and I'm definitely excited to see it once it's ready. Now you might be wondering, how does he play games without a gaming PC? Well, my guy has an entire home theater right behind him, complete with massive seats, a surround sound system, and a 4K projector where he can enjoy some console gaming. A lot of the things here are still work in progress, including additional updates to his setup and a second one he plans to build in the same exact room. You did mention possibly having me build your next PC, and as much as I want to take on the project and build you an incredible, stealthy PC, I'm currently booked for the rest of the year. So if things change early next year, find me on Discord and we can definitely make it happen. But nonetheless, thank you so much for coming on the show. Next up is a pretty simple yet functional setup from Zany, a cybersecurity engineer from Illinois. Since she's working with a relatively small room, she hasn't gone all out just yet, but does plan on making some updates very soon. We've got the good old IKEA Lack Captain and Alex Zor combo with some RGB strips along the edge for added ambient lighting. She's running a T layout with a 34 inch LG Ultra Gear as the main and a 27 inch Asus display as a secondary in vertical mode. For peripherals, she chose the Wooting keyboard and a Lamzu mouse paired with a Corsair RGB Virtuoso headset held off to the side. Apart from that, there's just a Lego Toyota Supermodel on the desk, which honestly, everyone should be jealous of because she actually owns a real Supra too. And yes, it matches the color scheme of her setup. So before you start hating, let me ask you this. What color is your Supra? Okay, back to the setup. Cable management looks decent. The cables aren't perfectly aligned, but they are kept off the ground with cable clips and Velcro straps. The same goes for the wiring behind the PC. It's primarily white, housing an i7 14700K and a Gigabyte RTX 4070. Since you'll soon be making some setup upgrades, I'd recommend replacing the PCI cable splitter. Go for custom cable extensions instead, or something like the Hydra's cable that I featured in a recent PC build. It's also available as a 24 pin variant, which would replace the default power supply cable and significantly tidy up the look. Overall, it's a cozy setup, and I especially like that you took a more creative route by hand painting those Sasuke and Itachi canvases, rather than just buying art online. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but this adds a more personal touch that's truly impressive. Thank you Zany for sharing this with us, and I apologize if I butchered your name. Last but not least, we have Jakub, a student from Slovakia with her quad display corner setup. So she studies electrical engineering, but is also passionate about cosplay. And from all the Genshin Impact memorabilia and wigs, you can probably guess what she likes to cosplay as. The overall decor makes this setup feel pretty cozy. Anywho, as I mentioned, the setup features four displays, three 27-inch Dell monitors, one as the main and two in vertical mode, and a 24-inch AOC at the bottom, which she raised slightly using a pair of stands. Since she usually plays with a controller, the peripherals are geared more towards productivity. We have an MX Mechanical Mini and an MX Master 3S mouse. She's an avid Osu player though, so she also has a Wacom drawing tablet and a Logitech G Pro keyboard that she takes out when it's time to hit the notes. We don't have any photos of those unfortunately. Cable management looks amazing from the front, nothing is dangling down and everything is secured against the perforated part of the desk in the back with multiple cable clips. Great job overall. If you look behind the monitors, everything is under control there too. But if you look closely, the monitor mount for the middle two monitors isn't attached to the edge of the desk. Instead, it's mounted through holes in the netted portion. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but it allowed her to avoid placing the monitors too close to the wall. By securing the bottom part through the netting, she managed to make the monitor mount appear integrated with the desk itself, which honestly looks pretty cool. The other monitors and the AT2020 microphone boom arm are attached to the edges as usual. The PC powering it all is built inside the Fractal North case, rocking an i5-12600KF paired with an RTX 2070 Super. It is unfortunately tucked in the corner, but this was due to space limitations and to keep it closer to her TV for easy connection. Besides, it's not currently a flashy build worth showing off from the inside, but it gets the job done. 
Taking a step back and looking at the room from a wider angle, it genuinely feels like an artist's den. And I love it. It's great to see how you've balanced your hobbies, work, and passions in one cohesive space. And hey, look at that, a bamboo lab printer for custom mods and probably cosplay stuff as well. Great choice on a 3D printer, by the way. Thank you, Yakub, for coming on the show. Unfortunately, that wraps up episode 367, ladies and gents. Uh, we've actually had more girl contestants today than we've had in the past 15 episodes. Uh, now that I think about it, let this be a sign to my 6.5% out there. Submit your setup so we can have another girl edition of Setup Wars, which we haven't done in a very long time. Nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your favorite, and I'll catch you very soon in the next one.